Hello, <laughs> and welcome back to another episode of Cypher, where, yeah, things are tough. I've been looking at this stuff. I mean, like, on, to be honest, for most of these, I've been doing off-camera thinking at the very least, and some, you know, for some of them more than others. <laughs> this one was a little bit more involved, actually. Um, and now, you know, this one... I still don't have anything. I can show you. I can show you stuff though. I'm, I'm better prepared this time. I think this is the right one. Yeah. So look at this. So this here is these cliff, and then up here we have the the code, I guess. And now, I mean, you could just start. Like you could say, like, uh, like this is is this part of the cliff, I think. Because like it's at the bottom on the left, and I think it's lower on this side and then on this side. The dot, I don't know, I don't know. Then this part is is right right here, I guess. Sure. This is the the foot again. This is this again, just with a dot. Then then this very flat line, I think it has to be the top of the head, right? I mean, it's almost a straight line, but there's nowhere else where it would be like this straight of a line. I don't know. Um. Then this one is that same foot again, just without the dot. This is the arm again. So a lot of repeating letters, or almost repeating letters, I guess. Then that would be the top of the scar again. This one to me looks like it's this part, right? Like it's this the one horn and then that little bit of the inclined before we go to the fat part for the top of the scar letter. Or or yeah, I'm assuming it's letters. <laughs> By the way, that we're looking for. Um so that would suggest to me that this is right before this, maybe? If we go, if maybe it's just like a sequence thing? But I, I, I don't really know yet. Um, I don't really know yet. So this is right before this, or this is right after this, depending on how you want to look at it. <laughs> and this would be the foot again with the dot. So that's the same one as this and this. Uh, this is down here. Which makes me think so there are four here, right? That's like the top and then the bottom and then on both sides so there are four right there and then there's one foot here that's five and six so that's like going around we have one two and then three four five six but there's nothing ever that's the bottom of the the head so i don't know are those ones i guess they must be right it wouldn't make any sense otherwise uh, but then we come to this one, and this one I don't know where it's supposed to be. Is this the side of the head here? But that angle, does, that's not, I mean... That's not part of a circle. And that's a screenshot, like I didn't, you know, draw this or whatever. This is a screenshot straight from the game. Where is this? Or is it like... Is it here? Is it like this part of the head and then this? It seems most likely to me. But that would mean there's like... There would be like one up here. To mirror, you know, that one. And then one right below that like takes part of that again. I don't know. And then there must be stuff... But how many? Like the, the thing is like how many are in between here? Like is there one here and one here? And then we go into those? I don't really know. And I guess it would be an uneven number, because we have this one right here, and then if everything else is mirrored on both sides, we would have an uneven number, which actually would make sense. Maybe. Wait. Um... Yeah, and then this is the other foot. This is this, and this is this with a dot again. So that would leave what? Like one, then, then two, then three with this one right here, and then at least one more here, but th I don't know. One or two here. And then one, two, three, four, five, six right here, and then it depends. And there are two up there. So down here we definitely have six, right? So this part is, is six different positions. Let's just count the halves, maybe it's easier. 
the one, two, three, and then definitely here four and five. How many would we want? <laughs> well, so the alphabet has 26 letters. I think. No, it does. <laughs> so we would want 26 different ones to get all the letters mapped on this. Oh, but that's the dots. The dots are... Like you go around twice, you would need 13, that's why it's uneven. This is the one that makes it uneven, and then with the dot, it's either the first half or the second half of the alphabet. That's just to split the halves. That would make sense, that would make sense. I mean, I've been thinking about this already, I didn't really get to the dots yet, so I just looked for the positions and I figured, you know. Now where do we start? And do we get to 13, actually? Because I don't think we do. Because, what, no, but 13 would be six and a half, right? And you have one, two, three, four, five. So it would be just one big one here, it would be six. And then it's like seven, eight, nine, and then the big one here is 10. And this one is 11. This one is, is, this one is 12, and then the top of the head is 13. And then the second time around, we add the dot, or the first time around, we add the dot. But now, we're, where do we start? Do we start we start at the top because that's the one that's uneven so that's the one that's like extra it's different so it would be a then this horn would be b this right here would be c then the big one would be d that doesn't happen though this one is e should start filling those in, I guess. E, A, A. No, that's not A. That's A. That's A. That one is a C. Is that the only E? Yeah. I guess in the one with the dots would be just uh, 13 letters, I guess, right? So E. This one is F. Do we have that one? No. I don't think so. This one is a G. This one happens, right? Where's my, where's my, I need to move to the left, please. Uh, it's this one, right? That's G. Only one stone? Yeah. No, but did I do it right or was it F? Well, well I lost track of the alphabet there. <laughs> A, B, C, D, E, yeah, F, G, okay. H. Is this one, I guess? No, wait. No, no, that one was G. H would be the other way around. No H. I, I here, uh, Che, no Che, right, no, K, but really big one doesn't happen, L, like would be this one, mirror doesn't happen, uh, and this one is M, which does happen right here, A, M, A, That's N with a dot, but there's no one with a dot. Uh, then the horn O doesn't happen. This doesn't happen. P Q R two R's right here. Keep touching the mic. <laughs> the cable again. Uh, S at the end. Right there. Then this one with a dot is a T. So this one right here is a T. Oh, and this one and the one to start too, right? Yeah, yeah, those are our T's. 
Tetragrammaticus, I'm guessing. Yeah, because that one is a U and the last one we're missing. I mean, uh, well, I sort of spelled something. Feels like I'm missing a letter, but it seems right. It is right. All right, that was good. <laughs> that was really not that bad. It took it took a little while off camera though to get you know to make sure all those symbols were where I thought they were. I mean, this one just doesn't really like it. Doesn't make sense, I guess, sort of. But I, I mean, they re yeah, I guess they're reusing the the lines with the arms too. They just get top and bottom, so it would make sense that the the horn, which is not a horn, this is like the the moon. This is the sun. Then this is the elements, and this is fire. I think those are the the meanings of those parts. But it just looks like a devil to me, or like a horned demon or something. Anyway, that's that one done. It went fast. And then I haven't looked at this one at all yet. Uh, I've looked more at this one. I have no idea what to do with it though. I, 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 this, like a, as a DNA sec sequ sequence, it doesn't make sense. I don't know. And then like the they're always like they always paired T and A and uh, C and G or A and T and C and G, I guess. So if you have like a, a strand of DNA, like just the double helix thing, right? And and then the way they're connected across the double helix, I think. If I remember that correctly, it's always A and T and C and G. So if you have one strand and you look at it and there's like an A, then you know that on the other strand there would be a T. So there are always the same amount of A's and T's and C's and G's, but none of that really seems to help with this one. I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. I mean, somehow we probably have to map it to an alphabet, I guess, but I, I don't really know. I don't really know. So let's look at this one first, I guess. Uh, and I haven't looked any like at all. I should have probably done some, but I didn't want to do like the first, you know, my first impression off camera basically. So the perfect cipher. Uh, one time pad is what Google gives me there. In cryptography, the one time pad OTP is an encryption technique that cannot be cracked, but requires the use of a one time pre shared key the same size as or longer than the message being sent. In this technique, a plain text is paired with a random secret key, also referred to as one time pad. Then each bit or character of the plain text is encrypted by combining it with the corresponding bit or character from the pad using modular addition. The resulting ciphertext will be impossible to decrypt or break if the following four conditions are met. The key must be truly random. The key must be at least as long as the plain text. The key must never be reused in whole or in part. Uh, and the key must be kept completely secret. Well, yeah, that makes sense. If it's just completely random. Yeah. It has also been proven that any cipher with the property of the of perfect secrecy must use keys with effectively the same requirements as OTP keys. Digital versions of one-time pad ciphers have been used by nations for critical diplomatic and military communication, but the problems of secure key distribution distribution have made them impractical for most applications. Because yeah, you need to have that key somewhere, and if it's completely random and it has to be very long, like the same length as the the plain text and it's unlikely that you'll just remember it so you have to have a physical copy of it somewhere and then how do you get that to someone without you know it being intercepted or whatever so yeah not perfect but where's the perfect cipher thing I don't know. First described by Frank Miller in 1882 the one time pad was reinvented in 1917 July 22nd, 1919, US patent, whatever, was issued to Gilbert Burnham for the XOR operation used for the encryption of a one time pad. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Perfect secrecy. Mm. Let's see. Claude Shannon, that's a name we've already read. Uh, 
latency to random mosquitoes erosion authentication. Or those are issues. Exploits. I don't know. But yeah, the perfect cipher is the one time pad apparently. Okay. I, I can live with that. So what else do we have here? But then is that like the key for our one time pad? The C O Q Y L S G Y L Z or is that the the code like the code the cipher? Uh, all right, all right. Rosignor's masterpiece. Who's Rosignor? Rosignor's masterpiece. Great, great cipher masterpiece. In the history of cryptography, the great cipher, or Grand, Grand Chivre, was a nom nomenclator cipher developed by. The Rosignors, several generations of whom served the French crown as cryptographers. The Great Cipher was so named because of its ex excellence and because it was reputed to be unbreakable. Modified forms were in use by the French Peninsular Army until the summer of 1811, and after it fell out of current use, many documents in the French archives were unreadable. Uh, technically, nature of the cipher, the basis of the code cracked by the series, whatever, was a set of 587 numbers that stood for syllables. How does, it, how does it work? Some more info there, but I don't, I don't really know. I don't know what to do with all of this yet. It does feel like the perfect cipher is like part of it. Rosinor's masterpiece is part of it. Maybe those are the keys, and the other things are the encoded messages, or the other way around, which seems less likely. And then we have this whole mess down here, and then we have Playfair. Let's see what Playfair is. Playfair cipher, okay. The Playfair cipher or Playfair square or Wheatstone Playfair cipher is a manual symmetric encryption technique and was the first literal di diagram substitution cipher. The scheme was invented in 1854 by Charles Wheatstone but bears the name of Lord Playfair promo for promoting its use. <laughs> Alright, so how does it work? Using Playfair. Play fair example is the key, assuming that I and J are interchangeable, the tables the table becomes omitted letters in red. Why why do you omit letters? Oh, because they already are in the thing, so you don't repeat letters. It's the same as the or similar to the other the I forgot what it was. What was it? Where is it? Did I never write that down? I must have written it down. Can't find it. Can't find it in my notes. Really? This Sator, right? Sator Arepo, Dennett, Opera Rotos. That one. Encrypting the message, hide the golden tree stump. And then you make squares, no rectangles, what? <laughs> so you make the pair high forms a rectangle replace it with VM. The bear TE is a column replace it with OD. What? <laughs> why, 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 why? A 
If both letters are the same, no description. The pray for your cipher uses as a 5x5 table containing a keyword or phrase. But what's our keyword here? Is it like the perfect cipher, Rosinoro's masterpiece? And then no cheating, pray fair? Or is no cheating, pray fair another part of it? And then we would like look at the letter pairings and then, I don't know. <laughs> That looks, that looks a little uh, tough, maybe? How many letters do we have? C O Q Y L S G Y L Z two four six eight ten. But the perfect cipher is much longer. But for like a one-time pad, we would only need the same amount. But longer is fine, I guess. I don't know how that really works though. Um, so do I need to do the perfect cipher decoding on the first one? Or do I do everything as a play fair thing? Let's understand play fair first, I guess, because I feel like that's the most important hint in this, and I might be wrong. <laughs> um, to generate the key table, one word first, one would first fill in the spaces in the table. A modified Polybius square, that's yeah, what we've done before, with the letters of the keyword, dropping any duplicate letters, yes. Then fill the remaining spaces with the rest of the letters of the alphabet in order, usually omitting, omitting J or Q to reduce the alphabet to fit. We'll do J again, I think we did that before. Other versions both put I and J in the same space. Yeah, okay, we can do that too, I don't know. The key can be written in the top rows of the table from left to right or in some other pattern such as a spiral beginning at the upper left. We'll just do it in rows, I guess. I don't know. To encrypt the message, one would break the message into, into diagrams, groups of two letters, such that, for example, hello world becomes H-E-L-L-O-W-O-R-L-D. These diagrams will be substituted using the key table. Since encryption requires pairs of letters, messages with an odd number of characters usually appear, append an uncommon letter such as X to complete the final diagram. Okay. The two letters of the diagram are considered opposite corners. Are there any X's in this? I don't see any. <laughs> That's already encoded, I guess. So that, yeah, whatever. Um, The two letters of the diagram are considered opposite corners of a rectangle in the key table. To perform the substitution, apply the following four rules in order to each pair of letters in the, in the plain text. So we make the square, then we make the pairs of... Yeah, in this case, like we, we go the other way, but sure. If both letters are the same, or only one letter is left, add an X after the first letter. Okay, so LL and Hello World would be LX. Encrypt a new pair and continue. Some variant of Playfair uses use Q instead of X, but any letter itself uncommon as a repeated pair will do. If the letters appear on the same row of your table, replace them with the letters of to their immediate right respectively, wrapping around to the left side of the row if the letter in the original pair was on the right side of the row. Okay. If the letters appear on the same column of your table, replace them with the letters immediately below respectively. Wrapping around to the top. Alright. If the letters are not on the same row or, or column, replace them with the letters on the same row respectively, but at the other pair of corners of the rectangle divided by the original pair. The order is important. The first letter of the encrypted pair is the one that lies on the same row as the first letter of the plain text pair. To decrypt, use the inverse opposite of the last three rules and the First, as is, dropping any extra X's or Q's that do not make sense in the final message when finished. Okay, so we just need to make the square and then decode the pairs. For the square, what is it? 5 by 5 and we omit one, probably the I, the J, I guess, whatever, it's fine. But then what's our what's our key phrase? The perfect cipher, Osignor's masterpiece. 
Do I need to decode those first and then make them into the square? Or are those two the things for the square? I'm not sure. Let's let's get an editor here. All right, and then make font like nice and big. And then what do we do? Uh, let's just I don't know. But if you do the perfect cipher. Don't repeat the E. But I mean, the perfect self is one time pad because I also use that, I guess. Piece up here would be that's it already, right? <laughs> it's hard to keep track. Finish the alphabet, it would be what A, B, C is there, D is not there, right? E, F, G, H, I, no J. was what the great cipher was Rosinger's masterpiece because that's the one that's like that you, like one time pad perfect cipher that maybe is sort of equivalent but that great cipher is definitely better than Rosinger's masterpiece because that's not really what this is known as Like I mean, we're not using no cheating Playfair because it's in like it's not it's gray. It seems like it's a hint and not anything else. But I could be wrong. 
I could be very wrong. All right, and now we need the rules for the play fair thing again. I don't have them anymore, where are they? Play fair. There's a decoy, we go from the bottom. Four rules. If the letters are not on the same row or column, replace them. Yeah, yeah, okay, if they're both letters, sure. Wait, how do I really, wait, okay, I need, I need. I need a screenshot of this. The inverse of the last three rules. So instead of left, I go right, right? So the first pair is CO, up here it would be here, in the same row. The bridge of the letter to the immediate right, so we go to our immediate left, so F, I. Same column. Uh, rhythm to let us immediately below. So Q turns into Y and Y turns into. No, above. We, y turns into Q. And Q turns into M. And it gives us FIMP, <laughs> which is not a good start. Let's do the other square and see if that is any better for that. C, O are not on the same row. But they make like a rectangle here, C and O, C and O. Not row, not some row, not some column. Replace them with the letters on the same row respectively, but at the other pair of corners of the rectangle defined by the original pair. The order is important. The first letter of the encrypted pair is the one that lies in the same row as the first letter of the plain text pair. So that would be an N, right? And an R. That doesn't really seem any better though. <laughs> That's not a good start to a word either. Or maybe this is all completely different. Maybe this is not, no, nothing, nothing is the hint for the square. We just have the, how many letters in Rosignor's masterpiece? Two, four, six, not in, like in the code. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. And how much, how many letters in the, in, in the great cipher? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fourteen. So that is what that is at the solution. So C O Q Y L S G Y L Z makes one time pad, and F K Q X A Q R Y B N F W Q A makes the great cipher. And from there, we make the square. And the play fair one and then we translate the last bit i'm pretty sure now because none, none of the others make any words unless we need to look for anagrams but i really don't i don't know it doesn't seem right because <laughs> that's not what this is like play fair doesn't use anagrams it would be weird and mean and i don't like it <sighs> okay so how do we how do we do that then what's well, i mean keep that in case we but it's wrong Let's make a new one, an empty file here, okay. So our pairs are C-O-Q-Y, L-S-G-Y, and L-Z, and then what? That's the 
solution. And that's the great cipher. See all that, I'll fix it. <laughs> Give me a sec. Alright, so do we have any repeating ones? We do. So if QY here and QY here, so we know that this pair. Of is ET but I think that's it already right no CO happens too GY too Year two. How do we like build this into a square? Like how do we make the square? I mean you can make like you, you have to like just oh man. Is tough. <laughs> uh, we don't know which rules were applied to each of the pairs, so we can't just make assumptions about oh, you know, these are in a row and these are in a column. We just know that well, they're either in a row or in a column, or they use the rectangle, right? Like, there's no here, this is that, this is that, this is that. I don't know what to do then. And IL happens nowhere else, so that's a letter that doesn't happen in any of them. So not one time pad and the gray cipher. Maybe we can just make guesses based on that. But it could be the same, it could be a letter we already have a solution for, it's just that it's not... Yeah, because it could be like a rectangle and then it's a different corner encoding, right? And then that could make an I out of like a, an A or something where if it's a row, it's an R and if it's a... I don't know. I mean, are the E's we see are either Q's or G's in the encoded version, right? As in 
just Q E G E Q E Q E Q E. Oh, and we know that A Q and Q A are the same. So they are not. But it could be still a rectangle, right? Can we rule anything out? I don't know how we rule stuff out here. Because if they were a rectangle in our virtual thing, then. If the letters are not on the same row or column, replace them with the letters on the same row respectively, but the, at the other pair of corners of a rectangle defined by the original pair. And the order is important, the first letter of the encrypted pair is the one that lies in the same row as the first letter of the plain text pair. Ow. <laughs> that would be the same... Like the rectangle would look the same either way, right? Like it would be... Yeah, we can make an, an, an informed decision based on that. Or can we? If the letters appear in the same column, replace them with the letters immediately below. That would also be the same backwards and forwards, so like ER and RE would still result in the same thing. Yeah. So how do I know, how do I know anything? I don't know how we get from here to like a, a completed play fair square. too. <laughs> How did I not see that? Oh, and then KF is HT. Three. Well, I mean, you know, three, two, one, P. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why the piece there. Right, like we know K is an H with an F, but that the KC is something else, right? I, I can't really make any any guesses based on that. Well, we have what we do have is Q Y. The Q is an E, QX, the Q is an E, QA, the Q is an E. Q is always an E somehow. What would that mean? That they're all on the same, like the, the, the same rule applies for all of those. So they're either all on the same row or in the same column, right? Because they can't all make the same square or rectangle, I mean. So Q, Y, X, and A. Like if we knew that the Prefair square used the word, we could just guess that X, Y, Z, you know, those are in the 
the bottom row. But it just could be a random Playfair square, so we can't really make that assumption. Because otherwise, you know, if you fill out the alphabet at the end, then you would probably have X, Y in the bottom row next to each other, which means that... But that would mean that E is also in the bottom row. It would be weird. <laughs> But an EQ, X, Y, A will all be in the same. How do we know? What does it mean really? <laughs> if E is or Q, yeah, E is always encoded into Q with those, with the Y, the X, and the A. Then that means that they are in the same row or in the same column, right? Because the E can't be both above and to the left. appear in the same row of your table, place them with the letters to the immediate right respectively. So that would mean that Q would be here and then E would be next to it. But it would only happen if or Y, but then T will ha have to be here too. Y, T, X, G, A, R, is too many. What? How is Q or is E? What, 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 QE. YT. AR, AR, QA, YT. But like, right, we have RY and AT and QA and ER. And then QE and YT together are also Q. Yeah, Q, QY is ET. And RY is AT and QA is ER. What options does that leave us with? If you have a square or a rectangle, let's say. And Q and Y would be opposite corners of it. Then that would leave us with E here and T here. Also mean that if you make a rectangle with A or with R and Y, then like I don't know, like something like this. Then we have A Y makes R E. No, EQ makes RE. So that can't be right. But if you do AQ like this,
for a TME. Then AQ would be on the same, and that can't be right. Oh yeah, this is so hard to figure out. I don't know. I mean, you could just guess that the Q is an E and SQ too, and we would have an E there. E, C, S, H, T, T, 3, 3, 2, 1, P. That could be 8. If there's an E there. But it's not satisfying if you don't get the, the square. <laughs> But I don't I don't know enough I don't know enough about the rules to go back to make the square happen from the from the code and the solution. But I mean like if you guess that this is an E because all the Q's are E so far, and then you say, well this is gonna spell eight then, because if you have you know three, two, one uh, in the end there. And you have three letters missing at the start, and how many numbers? I have six letters, oh, three letters, I'm sorry. But that's just guessing, and I don't like it. <laughs> because it just assumes that the Q is going to be an E. But if we assume it's all numbers, which three and then one at the end, and the possibility for two in between would heavily suggest there aren't really very, very many numbers that end in HT, right? In fact, that's only eight. And if we put in eight there, then that only leaves three letters at the start, and then there can't be anything other than six. Or it could be two. Two is also very short. It's true. I'm just assuming because the letters are very different. But it's different pairs, so actually maybe we okay with be T W O E, which you don't have yet. But it's either that or two A three two one. But I want the Playfair square, and I don't know how we get to that. Maybe we're not supposed to get to there? Maybe we're supposed to guess, but there has to be a way to get from here to the square, right? P at the end, eight, three, two, one. Also not it. Well then try two, eight, three, two, one. We were just guessing too much, like we don't have the we don't have the confidence. Uh this last last attempt if that's what I do we'll have to go back to the drawing board on this one okay that's it oh could you even see the input I just put in the like this not spelled out I would like to see that square though <laughs> But it, that, like working that backwards without, that's tough, I think. Because you never know which rule was applied for each pair. And then I guess you can rule out some stuff if you start filling it out, like if you start putting them. But like, even if you know they're on a row or they made a rectangle, you don't know where in the five by five you need to put the stuff. I don't know how you really make, make, I don't know. I don't know. What do we have left? Just this guy? Give me the hint here. Because I don't know what to do with these. 26, 16. 
Well, 26 is letters in the alphabet. What's 16, though? Oh, 16 pairs? Because we have four different ones. So four for each, right? So what, A, 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 C, H, E, A, T, right? That would be 16 different combinations. And we just wrote them down in alphabetical order, that would make sense, right? So the second one would be C, A, C, 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 G, C, T, G, A, G, Z, G, 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 T, and then T, A, T, C, T, G, T, T. That's 16. But then how do we map it? Do we just, oh, like, I don't know how we map it. Do we always get the same hint, actually? I just, I just want to know. What if I do that again? No, it's just one hint for each. Okay. Uh, gray fear, whatever. All right. Those are our 16 pairs in alphabetical order, I guess, because I don't know what other order we would do. That would make TT the 16th letter of the alphabet, which happens to be, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> I do not know, where's my alphabet? It's somewhere here. It's a P. And then AA would be the first, which is an A, I guess. So we would do what? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Start over the first ten again. I don't know, maybe. Give us what? TT is P for sure. So P, very start. Where am I now? P. A, A is A or Q. So it's probably A because P, Q doesn't really make much sense. A, G is C or S. It could be both. A, G. No, that's what it just did. Oh, it's the same again. Well, C, S, pass. Yeah. Better than PAX, I guess, or PAC with double C. C, G is G or W. Right? Yeah. T, G is O, password. A, C is B or R, is an R. A, T is D or T is a D, password. G A is I or Y passwordy. <laughs> A G is C or S. A G is C or S. 
AT is D or T. Password is, oh yeah, password is, and then CD, ST, SD, C, CT, I don't know. CD? SD? CT? <laughs> ST? Well, CT are in this, right? What are they called? Base pairing. I don't know the other one is. The other one is? It is. <laughs> We've done it. <laughs> We've actually done it. Oh, man. I don't know. Sio sign and time mine? <laughs> I have no idea how you say those. And I didn't look it up. Because <laughs> I didn't think I needed it because it didn't make any sense. But in the end, it did. I'm glad I looked so much into the DNA stuff, into those base pairings and their names or whatever. But, you know? That was good. That was a good episode. Made good progress here. This, I mean, I'm not super happy with how we solved it because we mostly guessed it. But that does it. We've done all the challenge puzzles now. Let's get rid of this. Yeah, I think we're done. That's it. That's the game. Is there more to the game? Sure. <laughs> there's still like this. And there's also... It's very far away. this but there's not even like a there's no input for those I guess I mean if you solve them and it makes sense then you know you're gonna know oh yeah I got it but <laughs> I guess you're just tr trying to like make the, these into like plain text and there's like a lot of text and we don't even know what to do with them right I mean they're all the same length which is maybe interesting Maybe it's, it's a one-time pad thing and you do, like, you add this to that. That would make sense to me, actually, now that we learned about the one-time pad. Because these look really random. And, I, well, you have three of them. Maybe you use this one-time pad on this one and then the decode version of this on this one. But I have no idea if that's true at all. <laughs> that would just be my very initial guess here. It could be true, but I don't really, like, how do you do that? You do the, you do convert them to bits or whatever, or to, yeah, to binary, and then you do the XOR addition, I think. Did I remember that right? Is this something about addition? So I, I'm guessing that's what you're doing? Because it's not, like, I don't know, maybe it's just, maybe it's just basic addition. Maybe, you know, J is nine. L is whatever it was, and then you add it up, and if you overlap, you start from the beginning or something, that could also be it. I, I don't actually know. That would be my guess for those three. The one at the end, though, I mean, that just stands alone. I have no idea what that one is. Like, I don't, I don't even know what, what you would begin with. That could be a lot of things. So I don't know. But we've made it through. This is it for Cypher. Th these are really hard to, to actually pour off. I mean, the entire game wasn't easy. The first few rooms were really fair. And actually, the, the digital one wasn't too bad. The Enigma Machine one was a little confusing, but once I got the hang of it, it was fine. And these are just like a lot of weird guesswork and outside research. I don't know. This one was really annoying. Because I tried, I tried a few different things. <laughs> That's why I was really frustrated. And then decided, oh, well, maybe it's just the stupid first letters of the first few words. And then, we'll, you know, and then it's an anagram too. I don't know. That one I didn't really like. This one was weird too, because it was, yeah, it was like north, east, south, west or something, right? And then it's compass. I don't know. Because sometimes it's just that, like, and this one made no sense either. I didn't, I still don't understand what the shift, well, no, we did understand what the shift was at the end, right? We shift, not the pairs by one, but like the digits. 
by four, and then that's the first two letters, and that makes sense again. But like, you know, it's like, what do you shift, and when do you shift it? And like, what lever do you shift it? This was really annoying to do, but actually not too bad. But again, it was like, you don't really get the key phrase, you just get like something and you need to find the key phrase, because the, the, yeah, whatever. But it, I mean, it did find this exact phrase too, when I go over it right away. I just did, I did click, I clicked the key thing and then it was a different thing. Anyway. I'm surprised this went as well as it did. I mean, I did think about it a lot. <laughs> but we did it. We did it. Anyway, so that's it for Cypher. I hope you guys... I don't want to say that anymore. I hope you are. <laughs> enjoyed it. Um, I mean, I had a good time with it. It's not, it's not a great YouTube game, because a lot of this is hard to, you know... Like, you know, like the whole thinking and, and note taking a lot that is hard to make into video, I guess. <laughs> but we did fine overall, I'm happy with it. And uh, that's the most important part. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. I'll see you with something completely different in this time slot going forward. Um, yeah, something very, very different. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's it for today. That's it for the series. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.